Thank you. Thank you, uh, AQR, and thank you, Ron Spatz, for uh, keeping my sister's uh, voice alive, for all of your support of her work uh, over all of these years, and I'm really honored to be here. I also uh, want to dedicate my reading um, this evening to the people of Ukraine. Um, growing up as a first-generation Latvian American, we were siblings to the Estonians and the Lithuanians, but cousins to the Ukrainians. And my sister and I always referred to that group as the Liths, Yath, Laths, Ukes, and Stones. And so uh, this reading is also for them and for their freedom. I'm going to start with uh, a poem that was published in uh, the fall and winter of 2004 in AQR. Um, and this uh, poem is called Married Couple Singing. Aglona, Latvia, 1964. And speaking of history, 57 years we have been married. So long, when we sing, our mouths form the same O, our heads incline together, our eyes do not meet. His stiff back, my arthritic wrists, noses the same potato shape, forgotten tubers in the center of our faces. The exiled grandchildren call us Nemniaki, peasants. This place, old country. They want to inherit our ethnic names, my flowered shawl, his strong hands. Not our histories, not this place, the wrecked thatch roof farmhouse where I bore their father, where we slept nights through the occupation on mattresses stuffed with straw. Not our memories of the war. They keep us like a photograph over a mantle, a farm couple singing folk songs, scarved, booted, wrinkled, rotten apple faces, his tight tweed vest, straining buttons, dingy undershirt, smelling of onions, smoke, manure. My coarse cotton skirt, apron cinched above a belly bulge where I rest my hands. Relics, discarded by history, vanishing people, and we, and so it would be equally quaint for me to sigh, say, I was young once. Instead, I give them this. They can call it inheritance if they wish, a dream I had last night. In the center of our far Latgalian pasture, a brush fire blazed, heat driving flames upward from feverish coals into the flat pot metal sky of early spring so hot it had sunk a black trench into the ground. Around the periphery, two panicked ash gray mares galloped, my body not in the flames or on the trampled grass. I saw it as God might, a scene with no one in it. That fire still burning, a great pit in the center of my life around which something never stops running. And then I'm going to read uh, two uh, pieces that I actually have that were never published anywhere. One is not even named. Um, I have a lot of Eva's work um, from her lifetime uh, that I, I kind of flipped through from time to time. And I, I thought that these two uh, pieces fit in well with the um, other series of poems. The, this first one um, was probably written in 1999. You tell me your memory is a room stacked with newspaper. Sometimes you enter, swipe dust off the stacks, turn the brown pages, some you never looked at. You left us those, and they are silent. Is this organic, this gesture of one hand, this surrender, the way your surgeon says one brain hemisphere disconnects from the other? Is this the gesture of fireweed and wild rose, horsetail and lupin, stinging nettle, to lie down at last? Say nothing comes between us now? Or is this the moment when rain begins? Wind begins, a sound like someone moving a heavy armoire or the oak chest of drawers in my childhood room with the warped oval mirror and aluminum sheen. Birch limbs flail like scissors, crossing themselves and last leaves break free, career past my window and land, a flock of brown birds in the sodden field. I would show you pictures of this bay now overlain with peach and pale blue light, jagged between clouds and mountains, I would show you, here is Tuesday, and here is Friday, noon. This is your daughter, Eva, and this, and this. Rain drums the roof at night like your fingers, and the wind, a moan, a chant, a hum, a brushing shoulder, indifferent to me. 
I like to listen to the rain, Mama, on my red tin roof. When it drums harder, I'm relieved. It's a release, a long exhalation after holding my breath, or the way it stops, as if it never was at all, as if it had always been this silent. And then this one called Black Bread, written sometime probably around 2003 or 2004. My mother is knitting one of her shawls. Her hands are working, they can't stop. Her eyes are watching television at the same time they are watching my father. My father says in 10 days, in 10 days, it will be different. He'll be back there on the front lines, his legs frozen. He says now they are working on his hands, cooling them slowly. Touch them, he says. The cold is traveling up his arms like birds crawling backwards up a tree. When we were little, he planted a thousand trees in our backyard. He wore a handkerchief on his head. Now, the handkerchief, knotted and smelling of sweat, is the same thing. The same thing as the spruce sapling down in the hole, is the same thing as his Latvian army uniform. Anything my mother says, he can't hear it. We translate, say, Dad, Mom says you can't leave yet. She hasn't finished your scarf. That's right, she says. My mother's hands repeat this request all day long. Her mouth, shaped like an acorn. We hand her words to him like morsels of strong black bread. A few words, and then he sleeps. Uh, the next poem was published in the AQR spring summer 2007. And this one reflects um, her deep connection to the natural world and her constant uh, attempts to find her place within uh, this, that world. It's called, It Begins in Ice. I don't know what we expect to find, something blue and pretty, not how the world begins in ice, not how it's still being created, here, past and future, exactly the same. How we float in between slick insides, our fingers poking out of fingerless gloves. We belong to the older world, clad and lush. This creation of our country, chaotic, wild, doesn't recognize us. We weren't born yet. The ice pulls back unlike the tide, exposing nothing alive, just natal parts, rock flower, newborn scree, a template for the first lichen. The glacier's intelligence is unfathomable to us. Who, hiking up the moraine to where the ground is barren, could feel at home pitching a tent? Even the alder thickets don't invite us to build a fire, squat with a mug of smoky tea, listening to the one sparrow claim his undisputed terrain over and over. In the morning, when we pack to go, we're relieved, hearing the sudden cracks as the faces give way, unloading a wall of Jesus ice into innocent milk of the fjord. There are places on earth that aren't our home, scenery about which ca cameras cocked, we can't say, when you look at this, you can see forever and not be afraid. Here, past and future, always backing away, leave us marooned. If we put our ear to the ground, we won't be reassured. We don't belong here. We never did. And from AQR Fall and Winter 2008, Heaven and the Fallen World. To stand in the woods and watch the St. John's Day fire, the Latvians holding glasses of schnapps, to stand in the woods unseen, to watch the women in knee-length skirts, in pantyhose and pumps, the men stripped of their ties and jackets, to see them again, Mr. and Mrs. B, oak leaf wreaths crowning their heads, leaning against each other and singing as if nothing's happened. As if Mr. B had never collapsed dead at his carpentry bench, as if Mr. K had never discovered the spot on his lung. To see the men light each other's smokes between songs, light them from their own burning ends, tossing the butts into the fire. To see anorexic Mrs. K crunching almonds snuck from her pocket, as if she still had a stomach. To see her again in her tan pantsuit, the amber rings loose on her fingers, as if she still had limbs. 
The men heave more logs onto the fire like there's no tomorrow. Through the back dark backyard, my mother strides to the house on two strong legs. She's going to fetch the yanyasiers, yellow and dense, studded with seeds. Just this morning, she must have unpeeled the cheesecloth, placed the loaves on platters to see her hurrying like she'd never had an aneurysm, to see my father reaching for the next bottle like the past wasn't banging on the door of the house wearing an SS uniform, to see him pulling out the cork as if he had never at 85 opened that door and invited the war back in. Just like the old times, soon the neighbors will call the police now that the fire's so big, now that it's midnight and the ancestors have arrived armed with their coklas and pranks, to see them jumping over the flames, singeing the hems of their tautas tarpas, chasing each other through the garden, to hear the songs getting older, calling up the gods of thunder and fire, to see Mr. K feeling up my mother, his big hand crawling along her thigh, to see my father checking out the breasts on a Baltic beauty who's just arrived from 1904, a basket of blackberries in her arms. And that's the last straw. I slip into the woods like I did as a girl after crawling out my bedroom window. I run through the trees, up the bank to the vacant lot where the boyfriend sits in the car, smoking, waiting for me, waiting to take me out of this nightmare into his own American version, his right hand on my thigh, the left handing me the bottle of wine, the sweet kind that tastes like blackberries that makes me believe there might be a heaven. And this next one, the, all of those poems that I read were written pre-cancer and published pre-cancer. And then uh, the next one I'm going to read is from the spring and summer 2014. And this is, uh, this is During Cancer. And uh, it's from uh, her book of poems, Prayer and Wind. And this is a prayer 28. And of note, uh, it's, it's the date that it was written is uh, in here. And it's January 16th, 2013, which is three years to the day uh, before she died. Imperfect birds, saffron finches, they don't hail from here, but from South America, where caged the males are used for blood sport. Two girls for every boy and territorial to boot. Troopers, they take to it. Tanagers, like the scarlet of my youth. My mother loved them at the feeder. Look, look, pointing, tanagers, the R rolled. She had, she said also linoleum, traders jo, nuthatcher, other Latvianisms. To pray is to follow one word to its next, a pilgrimage, a trail of seeds, crumbs or dead grass, where saffron finches hoard for nests. A pinch of precious saffron threads heated in a pan of milk yellowed my mother's klingers, braid of yeasted golden raisin studded bread for our names days. From memory to philology, the trail goes. But the saffron finch has its story too, and I don't know how it arrived, in whose cage or breast pocket, upon which storm or consequence. Considered common, tolerant to us, itself displacing native birds. No surprise being lovely with its tangerine face as though dipped in the fruit's bleeding rind. My mother arrived by boat, the General Sherman. She was raped by another immigrant never lost her accent, never perfected English, for 60 years, never told anyone, said to her daughters only, from you, men just want blank. We filled in the rest. And then because I know that I'm getting close to my time, I think I'm going to end with uh, a poem from, uh, from a, Prayer and Wind, it's Prayer 21. It's one of my favorites. Um, I have it actually framed on my wall. And it, and it just reflects a bit of my sister's incredible wit and just, just part of her personality. And so I'm gonna end with uh, Prayer 21. This is a prayer for the waste. Days, hours, badly spent. Forays into the internet jungle land of links from the launch of the words, symptoms of recurrent breast cancer for tangled sheets and novels whose plots are long lost, for staring at ceilings in the dark, trying not to blink, 
for wasted fibers at coffee shops or newsstands waiting for delayed flights, for Scrabble, the weather underground, www.whatever.com, for catalogs, trying sweater after earring, convincing myself I require new shoes and a more neutral color palette, for staring out the window waiting for dawn or the mail truck or the right line, for lingering near the duck pond for no good reason, arranging books alphabetically and by size. To what end? For cleaning, wiping counters of someone else's crumbs and butter smears, cooking by recipe, generally an excuse not to be doing something hard. And hey, why are those trees just standing there? Bum birds hitched to their bum limbs, wind blowing their errant leaf tinsel and whatnots, everything waiting for the cows to come home. When they don't, when they won't, ever. They're cows and need to be driven. This is a love poem for the cows. Thank you.